Okey, cuba cakap lagi. Hai 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 hai. Okey, kali ni dapat pula. Hai. Okey. Okey, saya buat Hello. magic sekejap je eh. Magic sekejap je, magic magic sekejap. Okey dah, okey eh. Boleh start eh. Boleh doktor. Korang dah baca tak? Have you read the, the notes? The in vitro part? Yes doktor. I dah baca. Understand or don't understand? Ha? <laughs> huh? Okay as we have discussed before. Okay, they, they are concerned on the use of animals, the killing of animals and so on. So, scientists have tried to develop a more innovative and non-animal based experiments. Okay, uh, I've highlighted some approach yesterday, ada lima and there are five approaches. Uh, So the main, the main, the main approaches, non-animal approaches, the most widely used, the most widely used is in vitro, eh, number five. Yesterday I show you non-mammalian models and so on. Okay. Uh, in vitro cell cultures, the rest depend more, and and also sometimes the the other one is the omics, okay, the omics approach, microarray approach. The other two depends on the availability of the computer or software, you know, this is expensive things, you know, the software, everything. So not, not, not every lab or even in JSB, our job, our department, we don't have anybody who have this computerized modeling, SAR, QSAR, uh, model eh? to, 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 to be used as an alternative to study toxicology okay. so in in this slide we are more focusing on the in vitro toxicology we are not not going to discuss on the qsar and so on that is actually under pharmaceutical chemistry i think dr farah will talk about it because she's been she's been doing that with Padana University. Okay, uh, I think you have experience of or oh, being exposed to to in vitro toxicology during your exper experimentation, during your practical class, right? Or visit a visit to lab. Okay, so some some of the lab that use this in vitro toxicology study is, for example, Prof. Dawood, okay. and to study anti-inflammatory. Yesterday I talked about this already. Okay, and then Dr. Abdah, Dr. Sharifa on cancer, Dr. Nur Hafiza is doing on neurodegenerative. Yeah, Wei, sembang wei. Kang panggil abang tu turun ha. Listen, listen. Okay. Uh, lagi siapa Dr. Dr. Nur Hafiza doing on neurodegenerative study Alzheimer Parkinson. So if you interested in cell culture on Alzheimer or whatever, you can go and see her. And Dr. 
Nia also cancer, cancer and antioxidant. Lotasia antioxidant. Okay. Uh, so this, what 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 is this? <laughs> huh? What is this? Ninety six. Okay, pandai. Siapa nama? Asma. <laughs> Okay, Asma. Tambah satu markah nanti, eh. Thank you, Dr. Right, ah, kau remindkan saya, eh. Tambah satu markah. I add one mark for your ass ass assessment nanti. Okay, cytotoxicity in vitro toxicology is used to to screen, okay, for cytotoxicity, meaning if a compound, whether a compound can cause toxic effect on the cell. Okay, let's say you are, you are, you, okay, um, uh, I'll give you one example. For example, in anti-cancer study, okay. Okay, battery low, tunggu je. Okay, for example, anti-cancer study. So, you, what, what type of cancer are you trying to study? Okay, your supervisor will give you what type of cancer they want to study, what type of extract they are going or compound substance they are trying to study. They want to prove the the substance have anti cancer activity on which type of cancer. So there are various type of cancer. For example, I give I show to you here if. You are talking about colon cancer. The colon cancer itself, there are so many types of colon cancer. HT29, HCT116, CACO2, liver cancer, so lung cancer. And then you also have various types of normal non-cancer cells. Okay. So when you do anti-cancer study, for example, you have to have that particular cancer cell and you also have to have normal cell. Okay, why? Why? Because when you test a substance against cancer cell, if let's say that cancer cell kill, uh, sorry, if that sub substance kill the cancer cell, we have also need to know whether that substance also kill normal cell. Okay? So if it kills the normal cell, then it then what we can conclude the com the substance that you tested is toxic, even though it give positive result that it can kill cancer cell, it also kill normal cell. You don't want that kind of substance to be administered into your body, right? Okay. So why? Uh, so that what that what what I explained in the second and third point, eh? If any compound can kill cancer cell but also kills normal cell, they are considered toxic. So you should terminate the experiment using that compound. Okay. And if a compound did not kill normal cell but it kills the cancer cell, then further pharmacological potential can be explored. Let's say you want to see the mechanism, the mechanism of anti-cancer involved. You can do that. So this different type of cancer cell is due to what? Due to the source, okay? Whether from animal or human. From human, it can be from an African, African born with certain type of cancer cell or certain type of disease, okay? It can be from a Caucasian male or Caucasian female, African male, African female, different depending on the also the on the disease okay or the animal itself whether it have been induced or it have cancer or it have disease what what type of disease okay so and then the type of cell itself whether epithelial or b lymphocyte and so on that is that what make the variety of cells available eh, for certain for a particular cancer, okay? And you can choose any of these cancer cells for your study. So we go back to the screening part. The uh, 
other than that you want you also want to see protein binding if you want to study protein binding or you want to look at cytochrome p450 inhibition or induction if you want to see membrane permeability uh being being disturbed or not uh, on a cell if you give your extract what happened to the membrane okay you want to see metabolic stability whether there is changes in metabolism okay? and then interspecies for for interspecies comparison okay? because you have different different type of cell so you can do that using in vitro toxicology Okay, uh, I told you just now, cytotoxicity is toxicity to the cell. So it can be used to assess viability, structural effects, and or function of the cell, okay? For example, cell proliferation, whether there are decrease and increase in number of cells, whether if you give your substance, you give your plant extract, whether it can reduce or increase the number of cancer cell, for example, or it can reduce or de increase the number of normal cell, for example. Okay, if it can increase the number of normal cell, it, it is good uh, for your for your body. Uh, for 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 pharmacologically, it's a good extract or substance. If it can increase the number of cancer cell, then it is not good to be consumed. Right. Okay, and then for you to study the structure of the cell, for example, membrane integrity, whether there will be loss of membrane integrity, meaning to say, uh, for example, mitochondrial membrane inside the cell, okay? Because mitochondria is important for energy and energy production and so if if it can cause damage to the membrane integrity of the if a substance can cause membrane damage or it can disturb the membrane integrity then it can damage the uh, it can disturb the function of for example mitochondria okay the organelle inside the cell uh, and then functional you want to assess the function okay for example uh, similarly you can also assess the mitochondrial function okay so this is what we mean by cytotoxicity i, I explained this already so this is an example no? is the normal life cell if it is cancer cell or normal cell then after you give your substance you do the cell viability test using 96 plate well plates then you after you take a picture okay you stain the the cell with certain staining agent then you can see there is damage or changes to the structure of the cell this is example of that cell okay and then another picture to show you uh changes that occur you can look at under under light microscope and under fluorescent microscope quite interesting study in vitro so here you can see a control normal cell then those cell that have been treated with cod cod or com you can see the morphology have been changes have changed okay so this is cytotoxicity effect okay the cell have been damaged the number of cell is reduced structure have been changed another another different staining eh? to see the mitochondrial function
Okay. Uh, we go to okay ra any any understand any question clear doctor right. understand understand doctor okay. okay advantages we go to advantage advantages. all right advantages of in vitro assay first it reduces animal use right obviously then the test is cheap and fast cheap and fast uh cheap and fast cheap means there are certain kits you know kits that the 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 solution or certain chemicals that you need to buy some some in, if you buy in bulk, it is cheap lah. If you buy, your purchase is one kit, one one set, one box, for example, then it will be a bit, a bit expensive. Okay, if you buy in bulk, then it will be cheap. And fast depends on the facility of available lah in the lab. Okay, sometime, sometime. Uh, for example, the flow cytometer, a machine for measuring the anti-cancer activity, whether the cell is killed at which cell cycle stage. Okay, there are four four cell cycle stage again: G O, G one, apa tu? Okay, if you that flow cytometer, like like in in our faculty, it is in the lab of Pro, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Maha, which is in the faculty, uh, in the Department of Pathology, if I'm not mistaken. Pathology. Uh, so, if you have, if you need to use this kind of machine, you need to book with Dr. Maha, and then you have to go bring your sample, you know, from JSB to, to Pathology, Medical Pathology Department, it will take some time. You know, your your sample can be exposed to contamination and so on. So you have to be careful. So fast or not depend on the facility. Okay, test compound needed in trace amount. So you you don't need in milligram of sample. You need only microgram. Okay. Uh, so uh, in for for anti cancer and and I think for most of the in vitro study, meaning using cell or using low phylogenetic animals, the the amount, eh, the concentration or dose in vitro concentration, lah, the concentration that is required according to USFDA for a, a substance, a compound, an extract, a pure compound to be considered as having an activity, for example, anti-cancer activity or anti-inflammatory activity when you tested using in vitro assay is 30 microgram per mil, the maximum, okay, 30 microgram per mil. Meaning to say, if your compound is 40 microgram per mil, still, still acceptable for you to proceed for your, for your study. Lah. For example, if you do your master or PhD, you find out your plant extract or your compound uh, uh, have anti-cancer activity, anti-colon cancer activity at 40 microgram per mil, then you can still proceed for to 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 study all the mechanism and so on okay but if you see this activity the 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 maximum anti cancer activity at let's say 200 microgram per mil then it is not worth it for you to proceed more understand because 200 the us fda requirement for a compound to be considered as having activity is 30 the maximum is 30 if lower than that, that, that means your compound is very effective. 
Okay, if it is 15 microgram per meal or five microgram per meal, then it is very effective. But if, if it is 200 or more than that, then no point of you further test, testing it using whether in vitro or animal models. Okay, so this is the advantage of using in vitro first, then only go for animal study. Okay, you can decide whether your compound is active or, or not. Okay, based on the US FDA regulation. Okay, so you can use human tissues and cells. Okay, the, the, the testing sample is your the human tissues and cells and also animals. Okay, and as we mentioned earlier it is suitable for screening so you can screen because you have 96 plate okay well 96 well played <clears throat> you can put up to 10 okay maybe 10 you can put so many uh depending 96 is 12 times time eight right so maybe you can put eight sample in your plate and run the, the experiment so from there you can screen which compound out of it is the most effective one instead of testing one by one on the animal so the most effective one you choose and proceed with further in vitro and in vivo study okay. okay possibility to use the same doses in other tests so let's say you found out that your compound uh can kill cancer cell colon cancer cell at at 20 microgram per meal you can use that 20 microgram per meal or the range that you use for the colon cancer test you can use it for other cancer cell lung cancer cell and so on so uh you know when you use the pipette you don't have to change it you can directly use it to to take your sample and put in another plate containing other cancer cells okay and then time response can be tested okay for cancer for example you you can screen the effect of certain extract or drugs on the cancer cell at 24 hours 48 hours and 72 hours then you can know how at, at which uh, time did your compound produce the anti-cancer effect whether after 24 hours of putting the extract in the 96 well plate or after 48 hours or 72 hours okay you can see the number of cell decreasing as the time increase okay that that is the time response what we mean by time response and then you can study the toxicity what type of pathway in the cancer cell that have that are being triggered okay such as caspase 3 caspase 9 caspase 7 and f kappa b okay tnf alpha all this mechanism you can study using your cell once you tested it you can you can take the the, the because the cell is dying it will release all the content again yeah? so you can take the content and measure all these these metabolites or enzyme expression inside the cell whether the, the expression is reduced or increased okay yeah? So from there you can determine the mechanism. Hypothesize uh, can can prove the mechanism. And then the advantage also is to decrease biological variability. Okay. So using in vitro assay, you can decrease biological variability. Okay, because if you use animal there are certain variability okay which affects affect the result okay 
some some species might not respond well to 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 a compound compared to another species and then lastly human genes can be moved to cells okay. so th this is the advantage of using in vitro it's a, depending on the type of cell if you study on gene you can use you can transfer gene to cells okay for example if you use and if you study anti cancer uh, then nothing involving gene lah, eh? so this is just to tell you uh, overall in vitro assay also the advantage is genes can be transferred to cells okay. any question yes doctor clear Ah, doktor nak tanya. Yes. Kan tadi kan doktor tak uh, ada cerita pasal FDA kan. Dekat Malaysia, okay. kita yeah. kita ada tender equipment minimum untuk dos kan. Kita nak follow mana? Kat Malaysia. Normally normally in Malaysia pun we still follow US FDA because it is used worldwide kan. In the end in the end you akan you akan if you if you let's say your product your compound your extract is effective then so you want to hmm. come out with product you will not only produce your product to be used in Malaysia you want to market it all, all, all over the world so normally we follow US FDA as our guideline lah okay uh, if, if you did not follow US FDA let's say Let's say Malaysia come out with their own value. Let's say they say 50 is considered effective. Then your comp your, you cannot you sell your product. Definitely in US cannot. And maybe in Europe also you cannot. Okay. So so it's better to because because everything pun if you if you know everything that we do any law when normally we look at the western lah they, they set up uh, the, the the requirement lah and so normally uh, macam tu lah US have, because in in paper pun if you look at paper discussion when when when, when even paper from from africa ke from india ke from asia ke japan whatever when they when they discuss their finding they will mention usfda requirement is 30 micrograms so our our compound or our extract apa ni therefore can be considered as effective so they want pun refer to to this requirement juga right okay thank you okay Okay, disadvantage of using of using in vitro you see okay <clears throat> some cell culture have low proliferation capacity and high phenotypically changing capability. Okay, it is not possible that in vitro test may represent in vivo condition under such circumstances okay certain cell they have low proliferation capacity meaning if you take a certain amount of cell you put in the media to 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 make it pro, you put all the media all the nutrients to make it proliferate into certain amount of cell and some cell is difficult to proliferate so this is this the some that's why when you choose a cell you need to refer to previous literature you know that's why you need to do literature review and so on which type of cell is better okay you you for example i, I show you just now in the earlier slide for colon cancer you have ht29 kct116 kako2 which one is is the best okay depending uh, certain some of the cell might have low proliferation capacity so it 
difficult for it to proliferate. Okay, so if it is difficult to to proliferate, let's say you put ten cell in the in the media, you give nutrient and so on to make it proliferate after one week to get into to get around six to the power of ten. Uh, ten four times ten to the power of six. Okay, normally for in vitro, if I'm not mistaken, four four to five times ten to the power of six number of cell. You need that amount. So if you put certain amount of cell, you want to make it proliferate, certain cell have this issue. They have low proliferation capacity. So it is not not suitable. Like some cell are not suitable to be used for in vitro study, okay? And certain cells, they have phenotypically changing capability. They can change their uh, phenotype inside and the genetic part, they can change because of we left them to, to, to interact with each other. Uh, they might de develop certain type of uh, immunity, for example, okay? Compared to the parent, parent cell, then the first cell, which maybe if exposed to your substance can can be killed uh, easier, but after you after you let them for several days days to proliferate, they can they because they change their phenotyping phenotype capability. They have this changing capability, so the cell is not functioning as what it's supposed to function. Okay. So this is what, uh, the, uh, that's why some in vitro tests may not represent in vivo condition. And you cannot, you cannot get, you cannot get direct, I mean, similar condition when using in vitro, you assume that, you cannot assume that the condition that you use for in vitro is similar to in vivo condition. Like I told you yesterday, because in vivo, you know, you have liver to do metabolism on the substance, okay? And you have learned pharmacology, uh, if, you rem if you know, uh, certain drug after they being metabolized in the liver, they are more effective than their parent compound. Let's say paracetamol. Eh? Paracetamol is toxic, but after it go to the liver, liver process it to produce its metabolite, NAP, uh, NAPQ1, NAPQ1. This NAPQ1 is really highly toxic and it start to causing damage. That's why if you consume paracetamol more uh, overdose, you can, you can get liver damage and you can die because of the excess production of the metabolite of par paracetamol. Okay, so, so this kind of thing makes the in vitro impossible to represent in vivo condition. Okay, some cell cultures, especially primary cell cultures, cannot show clonal growth okay, and show loss of viability in short periods of time. Okay, some, some cell, uh, they, they, they tend to die Okay. to die, they have short period of time of to, to live. Lah. Okay. So you cannot be used for chronic toxicity studies. Uh, and then animal cell culture do not always represent similar result with human cell cultures because of the interspecies differences. So that's what I, I, I told you yesterday about curcumin, uh, C U R C U M I N, curcumin, which was found to be effective in cell culture, but not effective at all in the animal. Uh, sorry, sorry, we are talking about animal and human eh, due to interspecies different. So animal. As you know, not always represents similar result to human definitely. For example, even even in 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 life in vivo life life 
organism, eh? human and animal, human and cat, for example, the cat cannot metabolize paracetamol. Another uh, 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 simple example: if you if you if you detect your cat have fever, you cannot give paracetamol. Okay, it will immediately kill your animal. Uh, because because the 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 cat did not the liver of the cat did not have the mechanism to to metabolize the paracetamol so para, to, to sorry to excrete the paracetamol out of the body so paracetamol will be in the, the body of the cat for the rest of its life its life and it will die from liver damage I have this experience I have killed my my wife cat. Uh, so we learn from mistake, and because I'm not a veterinarian, I don't know. I just I thought the cat got fever, so I give paracetamol after one day gone. Okay, it is difficult and costly to use human. Okay, another issue of animal and human cell culture is that the cost of using human cell culture is more expensive. This is this, this some of the advantage, and then there are not definitive and precise test procedure for in vitro toxicity tests given by regulatory authority. So you don't have a definite or precise test procedure. Okay, uh, when you when you do your test, you have to sometimes modify according to your lab condition, okay? According to your lab condition. If you read a paper on, on anti-cancer activity from UK, for example, okay, is doing on, they are doing anti-cancer study on colon cancer, HT29, using HT29. So you want to use that HT29, you have to remind uh, you have to remind yourself that the condition in uk itself is not similar to us we are we have a hot condition and so whatever the condition they use in the lab 42 degree temperature to maintain the cell for example you cannot use use 42 okay it will it will affect your cell so you have to adjust. You, that, that, that is why uh, this kind of thing, normally the lecturer, after certain years, they, they, they have experience with the cell. Okay? They know, okay, maybe because of Malaysian condition, they try at 42, 43, 45, until 50, and 50 degrees Celsius was found to maintain the, the, the cell uh, growth at maximum amount, for example. Eh? So that what we mean by not definitive and precise test. That one depends on the lab condition. Eh? Sometimes you have to modify the medium itself. But, eh? Some people say 20%. Maybe you have to use 18%. Eh? Because of what? Because of the product coming from different company might also have different uh, different activity, different effect. Effectiveness of the compound, even though the same, might be different between different company, right? Okay, so that is what we mean by not definitive and precise test procedure. You don't have a direct one procedure that you can follow and you get the result, no. Okay. Uh, Common harmful effects like weight loss cannot be measured. For example, so you cannot definitely you cannot measure weight weight loss. Okay, if the compound have ability to reduce weight of the animal, you cannot see that in in vitro study. Okay, certain certain certain. For example, salivation, diarrhea, you cannot see that using in vitro. Okay. And then systemic effect cannot be measured in in vitro test. Okay? Systemic effect cannot be measured because you are using cell eh? instead of using 
uh, whole animal. Okay, specific organifrag also you cannot cannot be studied because you are using cell instead of the organ. And how tissue and organ work together cannot be tested also. How the tissue and organ work together cannot be tested. So how the how the tissue work with the liver to 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 heal to heal certain disease. Okay, you cannot you cannot see that. Okay, you, as, as I told you just now, liver especially, it can turn, for example, if if you learn about Parkinson, Parkinson, eh? L-Dopa, the drug, L-Dopamine, L-Dopa, it can be turned into effective metabolite and, and produce a more good effect, good anti-Parkinson effect on the patient due to the action of the organs, okay? So this is interaction between brain and organs uh, uh, for uh, uh, Parkinson. So you cannot see the, how they work, to, how the brain tell the liver to produce more, more metabolites that can help to reduce Parkinson effect. So there is this advantage. Okay. So this is for your information. Okay, target on yourself. Okay, no, uh, oh, there are ocular and skin testing can be used. Okay, this is another table eh, to show you the advantage or disadvantage you can read it okay this just the rest i think this example of 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 the type of in vitro in vitro models available you can read through if you want or you can go to search in the youtube how these tests are being carried out what is epidem how it is being carried out just for your information we will not go detail on this but but please please uh just at least remember the type of test bovine corneal isolated rabbit Chicken nucleated for ocular test, ocular toxicity. While for skin, maybe you have to know what type of test available. Okay, pink ear test, pre the skin, and so on. But how the method is being carried out? That one you can Google if you are interested. But I think in in our department alone itself we don't have this this type of study yet uh, even ocular involving the we have ocular for in vivo in vivo and yeah, we can do that in vivo but in vitro no okay. so with that i think that's all good habis class the rest ni banyak banyak ni is just for your Information. Ada soalan? Tak ada doktor. Faham eh? Faham. Okey, esok kita test. Doktor Syakira panggil. Ah. Soalan dia tak keluar. Apa dia? Lo, baru mas, alamak, saya tak admit dia lah. Sorry, sorry. Nombor urus mana, orang mana tarik kerana apa, orang mana tak kut. Wey. Hagilin off your mic. Any question?
Hello, any question? Nanti nak tutorial Tutorial mm -mm. Boleh boleh InsyaAllah mm. Rasanya kena bagi dekat de I need to give you all assignment kot Haa -ha. Boleh boleh Bagi saya fikir tu eh Okay mm. attendance as 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 yesterday Nanti nanti baru ada Belum ada lagi nanti you all kena log in and Click eh Attendant uh, Any So Exam kita tak ada exam lah Syafira Kita ada Asynchronous And synchronous Testing Saya pun tak tahulah apa benda Tak baca lagi benda tu <coughs> uh, But but I think we will try to Have an assignment lah So that I can give you all Tinggi-tinggi mark. Nak ke tak nak? Nak. Hmm. Laju eh markah tinggi eh. <laughs> Meeting tadi check up apa je doktor. Update. Apa tu? Nak Nak. Ah boleh-boleh. Marah lebih. Kat siapa? So, uh, let me, later I will tell, apa nama you, class rep, Sarah, right? I will tell Sarah how, how, how are we going to do the assessment. I need to ask Dr. Akira first. Okay. Uh, okay, apa lagi? Any, any question? Satu markah untuk asma. Betul lah. Tak nak bagi dua. Oh. Meeting tadi cakap apa? Ling Leong Fang. Meeting mana? Meeting dengan dekan. Hmm. We are talking about we are talking about publication of pensyarah. Our, our LPPT, our SKT. Sasaran kerja tahunan. Our marks for 2020 how it will be assessed on the part of publication actually okay they, they have changes the rules uh, increase increase our kpi uh, because for example like a professor every year a professor have to publish four papers associate professor three no uh, doctor doctor I think two, Doctor two, uh, new lecturer baru balik, maybe one. So this KPI we need to fulfill to get highest mark lah. And then the paper that we publish have to be within Q1 and Q2. There are four Qs. They, they rank it into Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 like your muet ni. Tier 1 sampai tier 6 kan. This one, Q1. So, we have to achieve the the uh, first and second, Q1 or Q2. So, that, that that's uh, tak ni lah. I mean, among us je lah. Bukan on the student part. Tak ada lah. Just, just because some of us tak puas hati Kalau ada apa-apa nak tanya outside of this Well you boleh tanya, tak ada masalah Maybe for your uh, uh, Yeah Who is that? Nak tanya um, Kalau ada test, maksudnya final test 
final exam tak ada ke apa? Final tu kita akan ubah. Kita kena ubah but we we did not come to a conclusion yet. Nak assess macam mana because this is the first time kan. So semua orang pun even kelas ni pun semua orang pun pening. I hantam ni ni. Nasib baik my wife tahu benda dia UITM ni lecturer. UITM memang advance lah pakai-pakai online ni benda ni. So dia yang set up semua. Ni nak you all punya attendance pun kena tunggu dia yang set up ni. So I tak tahu lagi nak cakap ke you your final eh, yang yang I tahu final yang you have to sit kena baca tu semua tu dah tak ada lah whatever yang sebelum ni dah tak ada lah maybe you are you are going to be given assignment ke macam tu ya or tutorial test tak test kut ya Okay. Right. Oh, dah ada attendance eh? Dah. Okay, dah ada. Pergi sign. Dah sign. Alright. Ya, yeah, siapa? Syafira, kelas lab Doktor. instrument. Lab, lab instrument bila? Bagi siap. Dia punya notes, I try to siap minggu ni. Notes dah ada, nak touch up, touch up sikit. Lepas tu, I bagi notes kat you macam hari tu semalam we discuss, you read the notes and then we decide maybe next week, the second week of the online punya class lah. We are given four weeks, right? So on the second week, we will decide when we will have a class for you to ask question lah kot. Ha? Boleh ya? Eh? Boleh. Because in the end you, you assignment juga tu nanti assignment dia. Alright. Uh, bagi masa sikit. So anything else? Okay kalau tak ada lah. Tak ada. Okay if tak ada kita boleh Bersurai lah. Dia buat apa raya oi. Nanti oh. buat balik sini bagi lecturer. Thank you Rota. Yang mana mentor-mentor dengan saya tu. Bawa main tiga empat balang. Menghadap. Ha. Okay. Dia pun dekat kolej. Ha? Ah, tak ada. Tak ada. Tak ada. Tak ada doktor. Saya tidak. Oh ya ke? Tak ada. Okey, okey. Terima kasih doktor. Okey. Terima kasih doktor. Oh ada orang kat kuliah yang okey, okey. Bye. Sama. Bye bye. Okey nak. Nak stop mereka. Yelah doktor punya ni. Thank you.